The Austin Convention Center was a spectacle of glitz and glamour tonight for TechCon, the premier technology event of the year. I smoothed my deep burgundy cocktail dress as I waited for Derek to join me after mingling with investors. My husband had been actively pitching his new enterprise data security firm, CypherShield, to venture capitalists here. Across the crowded hall, I spotted Derek engaged in an intense discussion with Cassidy Wells, one of his employees. I knew Derek placed a lot of trust in the young software developer, but her body language seemed overly familiar. She stood entirely too close, practically whispering in his ear, with her fingers lingering on his forearm. A knot twisted in my stomach. Needing some air, I made my way through the crowd toward the open-air balcony. As I passed by them, Cassidy's words made me freeze in my tracks. "'I hate having to sneak around like this,' she murmured in a hushed tone. Derek glanced around furtively before responding in a low voice, "'It's just until I can clean up this mess with Amelia.' My heart pounded as his meaning washed over me in waves of disbelief and sickening realization. I stumbled outside, struggling to catch my breath. The cool night air provided little relief. "'Hey, you okay?' A familiar voice broke through my daze. Vincent stood beside me, his thick-rimmed glasses illuminated by the glowing city skyline. I think Derek is cheating on me. I managed to choke out the words, feeling them rip through my chest. Vince pulled me into a tight embrace. Oh, Em, I'm so sorry. What happened? Steadying myself, I recounted the exchange I'd overheard between Derek and Cassidy. Vince's face contorted with anger as the gravity of the situation sank in. That bastard! After everything you've sacrificed to support his career? His voice dripped with disdain. We need to gather evidence and bring that slime ball down. I nodded, fists clenched with determination. Derek's deceit had shattered my world, but I refused to be a victim. If he thought I would go down without a fight, he was gravely mistaken. My mind raced as I formulated the first steps of my plan. Vince, I need you to dig up whatever you can on Cassidy and any financial discrepancies at CypherShield. There's no way he could sustain an affair and keep that startup afloat legitimately. Consider it done, Vince affirmed resolutely. I've got contacts that can access all sorts of records. We'll make that lying sack of... Amelia? Derek's voice cut through our hushed conversation. There you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. I spun around, anger flaring as I met the concerned gaze of the man I once trusted completely. Keeping my expression neutral, I willed myself to remain composed as deception after deception flashed through my mind. Sorry, I just needed some air, I replied flatly. Shall we head home? I'm feeling a bit under the weather. Of course, baby. Derek gave my arm a reassuring squeeze as we said our goodbyes to Vince and made our way to the valet. The ride home was thick with leaden silence. I stared vacantly out the window, fear and fury churning within me. Tonight's unveiling had set in motion a series of events that would ultimately unravel Derek's web of lies. He had shattered the loving oath we had taken, violated the sanctity of our marriage. For that, he would face the consequences. It was only a matter of time before the truth came crashing down upon him. And when it did, I would be ready to embrace my newfound freedom by letting the scales of justice solely in my favor. Over the following weeks, I kept a calculated distance from Derek, my affections turned to icy indifference. Meanwhile, Vince worked tirelessly to unearth any digital trail of Derek's misdeeds. I combed through months of credit card statements, Vince updated me one evening at his apartment. Lots of expensive dinners, hotel rooms, you name it, all the hallmarks of a tawdry affair. I clenched my jaw, sickened but unsurprised by the details of Derek's revolting dalliance with that cheap office slut. Vince's eyes narrowed. But that's not the worst of it. I found some major financial discrepancies at CypherShield, too. Like what? I leaned forward, my anger simmering. Well, for starters, it seems like Derek has been shunting investor money into unauthorized accounts under his control, Vince began, scrolling through documents on his laptop. There's also questionable accounting regarding payroll expenditures and taxes. That lying, cheating bastard, I erupted, fire coursing through me. He used my salary from Terrasis to help fund that startup scam. The sheer breadth of Derek's deception knew no bounds. While I poured my life into my software engineering role to make ends meet, he had been squandering our money on illicit thrills and shady dealings. Just then, 
The doorbell rang. Vince reflexively tensed before rising to answer it. I heard muffled voices before Derek's unmistakable timber boomed from the entryway. Where the hell is my wife? I froze as he barged into the living room, incredulous fury etched across his face. What kind of twisted games are you playing at? He advanced on me, remorseless entitlement radiating from his towering frame. You've been avoiding me for weeks and hanging around with this loser? Everything I've done is to provide for our future. In one charged motion, Derek swatted the laptop off the coffee table, sending it clattering to the floor. We're going home right now. Something inside me snapped at his show of dominance. Years of suppressed anguish and rage detonated in an explosive torrent. How dare you? I shot daggers at my soon-to-be ex-husband. You've been cheating on me with that simpering whore Cassidy, blowing millions of dollars on your twisted fantasies while I worked myself to the bone. Derek's expression flashed from fury to fear as I unleashed the full, scorching brunt of my disgust. We're through, Derek. I refuse to be married to such a deceitful, morally bankrupt Crichton. The days of your lies and betrayal are over. His jaw went slack as I punctuated the tirade by violently whipping off my wedding band, clattering it against the wall. Derek recoiled. Any trace of smug control evaporating from his bullying facade. You're making a huge mistake, Amelia, he stammered, voice quivering. Nobody will believe your insane accusations. I'll bury you with my wealth and influence if you try to ruin me. I matched his glare with seething determination. I have no doubt your ludicrous spending and dodgy finances will bury you quite nicely without any help from me. With that, I stormed out, leaving a shell-shocked Derek gaping in the wake of his life's implosion. The first phase was complete. I'd irrevocably severed our ties and exposed his moral void, but this was merely the opening salvo. Derek's reckoning was long overdue, and I would be the catalyst to dismantle his life as he knew it, just as he had so brutally disassembled mine. In the days following my explosive confrontation with Derek, I felt an odd sense of calm amidst the swirling turmoil. I had shattered the facade of our sham marriage and reclaimed my dignity. Now it was time to pivot to the next phase, dismantling his life completely. Vince proved to be an invaluable ally, his ruthless efficiency in gathering intel matched only by his outrage at Derek's treachery. One evening, he arrived at my apartment looking grim. I have the nail for Derek's coffin he stated, dropping a weighty manila folder on my kitchen counter. This is a logged record of every call, text, and email between him and his little mistress. I leafed through the documents, bile rising at the sheer volume of lurid communications. Explicit photos, arrived erotic messages, hotel reservations, all conclusive proof that Derek's affair had been raging for months under my oblivious nose. There's more, Vince continued grimly. It seems our dear husband wasn't quite as discreet in covering his financial tracks at CypherShield. He produced a raft of spreadsheets detailing transfers of investor funds to a shadowy shell corporation under Derek's control. The figures showed millions embezzled to furnish his depraved indulgences with Cassidy. That low-life scumbag, I erupted, anger detonating through me like an inferno. He jeopardized the entire startup to bankroll his fling? Vince nodded solemnly. Not just that. He flat-out lied to employees and investors about the company's financial standing to keep the grift going as long as possible. White-hot rage surged through my veins. I thought back to all the times Derek had manipulated and gaslit me about money issues, siphoning my hard-earned income to sustain his double life of unbridled deceit. That malignant, narcissistic predator? I seethed, trembling with revulsion. He robbed me of my dignity and self-worth for his selfish criminal pursuits. Just then, there was an insistent knock at the door. Vince and I exchanged puzzled glances before I moved to answer it. I pulled open the door to a cold draft, and the last person I expected to see. Derek, what the hell are you doing here? I hissed through gritted teeth. My wretched ex-husband barged past me into the apartment, his expression one of desperation and panic. We need to talk he pleaded, eyes darting around wildly. This has gone too far, Amelia. You have to stop this crusade before it's too late. Too late for what? I arched an eyebrow, adrenaline coursing at his audacity to ambush me. Too late for you to escape the consequences of your craven betrayal and fraud? Derek ran his fingers through his disheveled hair, sweat beating on his forehead. Please, 
the evidence you've amassed, it could ruin me, destroy my entire life's work if it gets out. I allowed a bitter laugh to escape my lips. You mean the life's work of gaslit lying and cheating funded by other people's money? I'd say it's a ruination well-deserved, wouldn't you agree? Vince emerged from the kitchen, glaring daggers at the pathetic man before us. You've got a set of brass balls showing up here whimpering for mercy, he spat acidly. After you demolished this family's future without a second thought. To my satisfaction, Derek shrank back under the searing rebuke. The mask of his self-assured facade permanently shattered, leaving nothing but the craven coward who had irrevocably fractured my heart. I'll stop at nothing to make you atone for your trail of destruction, I stated coolly, fixing my treacherous ex-husband with an unflinching glare. Consider this the mere first flicker of the inferno I'm going to rain down upon your shattered, deceitful life. Derek's shoulders slumped in anguished defeat as the gravity of his impending ruination took hold. He opened his mouth to protest, then seemed to think better of it. With leaden steps he turned and trudged out the door into the wintry night, alone, exposed, and bracing for the oncoming storm of searing justice I was determined to unleash. Mere days after Derek's pathetic attempt to grovel for mercy, I steeled myself to confront him again, but this time on my terms. I strode into the Cipher Shield offices, head held high, despite the startled gazes of employees who recognized me. The sleek modern space seemed to reek of Derek's duplicity. I marched straight past the front desk toward his corner office. Ma'am, you can't go back there, a flustered receptionist called after me, but I kept moving with determination. Flinging open his door, I fixed my soon-to-be ex-husband with a look of pure disgust. Derek was slumped at his desk, haggard shadows under his eyes betraying his lack of sleep. "'We need to talk, now,' I stated flatly. Derek startled at my intrusion, quickly regaining his composure with an indignant scowl. "'What are you doing here, causing a scene, Amelia?' "'Don't play dumb,' I shot back hotly. "'We both know I have irrefutable proof of your reprehensible affair and shady dealings here.' Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed a ceramic mug adorned with the face of that vapid bimbo Cassidy. My blood boiled at the audacity. Using company funds to indulge your twisted fantasies with your little office whore? I swept my arm across his desk, sending the mug and various files clattering to the floor in a cascade of papers and ceramic shards. How dare you? Derek erupted, leaping to his feet and pounding his fist on the desk. This is my company, and I'll spend the money how I wish. Your company, I arched an eyebrow in contempt. Or should I say, the company funded by investors and employees you've been ruthlessly duping for years to bankroll your pathetic infidelity. My words landed with sickening impact, Derek's feigned bravado crumbling. Ye, you have no proof, he stammered unconvincingly. Retrieving my phone, I pulled up the incriminating records Vince had gathered, the financial transfers, emails, travel logs of his rendezvous with Cassidy. I watched as each new dagger of evidence burrowed into Derek's facade. "'Sure looks like proof of fraud and misappropriation to me,' I stated coolly, holding the screen up for him to see the mountain of evidence. "'I have more than enough to bury you unless you confess and resign immediately.' Derek's chest heaved with impotent rage, knowing he was hopelessly cornered. Running his hands through his disheveled hair, panic crept across his features. "'Ye, you crazy bitch!' he sputtered spittle flying from his unhinged jaw. Think anyone will believe your melodramatic hysterics over my reputation? I fixed him with a look of pure, undisguised loathing. The evidence speaks for itself, you immoral, gaslighting sociopath. I've played more than enough of your demented mind games. With a few taps, I sent the entire file repository to the Cipher Shield executive team and board of directors. Derek's phone instantly lit up with a flurry of alerts as his world began crashing down. No. He croaked in disbelief, helplessly watching the reckoning unfold. There's no escaping the truth this time, I stated with finality. Nor the consequences of your compulsive lying and deception. In that moment, it became undeniably clear the facade had finally shattered. Gone was the smug narcissist, replaced by a sniveling, broken husk of a man. His chair squeaked as Derek collapsed back into it, seemingly deflating before my eyes. I turned on my heel and strode out, my disgust eclipsed by the grim satisfaction that justice had been decisively served. Still, deep down, 
I couldn't help feeling a lingering sense of gut-wrenching betrayal. The man I had loved, had built a life with, was nothing more than a mirage spun from greed and moral bankruptcy. But in the end, his greatest deception was the lie he had allowed me to believe, that the bind we once shared could ever be mended. For that, there would be no penance, no path to redemption. His downfall was complete and irrevocable, and I would emerge from the ashes, reborn and emboldened to forge a future free from the shackles of his depravity. In the aftermath of my explosive confrontation with Derek at Cypher Shield, the dominoes began to topple with ruthless momentum. Board members bombarded me with requests for details on the evidence against him. Investors screamed for answers about misappropriated funds. It was then that I knew I needed to bring in reinforcements. The situation had escalated beyond just exposing Derek's personal misdeeds. His entire empire was on the cusp of ruination. I turned to my loyal friend, Sophia Larson, a brilliant corporate litigator I'd known since law school. If anyone could navigate the legal minefield ignited by Derek's malfeasance, it was her steely brilliance. This is an absolute quagmire, Sophia muttered as she pored over the financial records and communication logs detailing Derek's affairs, both corporate and extramarital. She fixed me with an intense gaze. Make no mistake, the evidence is damning. That snake husband of yours is looking at criminal fraud charges on multiple fronts along with termination. I nodded, adrenaline surging at the prospect of Derek facing maximum devastation for his transgressions. He deserves the book thrown at him. I want him to lose everything after how completely he betrayed me. Oh, he will, Sophia's expression hardened. We're going to systematically dismantle every shred of credibility and success he so arrogantly clung to, facilitate a legal and PR bonfire that will incinerate Derek's reputation to ashes. Over the ensuing days, Sophia barraged Cypher Shield's board with a meticulous roadmap of Derek's deception and criminality. In tandem, she worked backdoor connections to funnel leaks about his indiscretions to media outlets. For his part, Derek remained outwardly defiant. He fought tooth and nail to shift blame and downplay the evidence. But legal proceedings were inexorably closing in, his corrupted legacy unraveling by the hour. I watched in perverse satisfaction as punishing headlines emblazoned Derek's face across publications, tech moguls fall from grace amid sex scandal and Cypher Shield CEO terminated, accused of fraud, embezzlement, became inescapable refrains. The evening the corporate acts officially fell, Vince and Sophia joined me at my apartment for a bottle of celebratory wine. We locked arms and cheered as footage of Derek being unceremoniously marched out of his offices by security flashed across the news. As the wine flowed, the catharsis truly sank in. My closest friends had stood resolute by my side in dismantling the once-charmed life of my traitorous husband. We banded together, undaunted, to unleash the justice he deserved. You did it, M. Vince crowed, pulling me into a tight embrace. The bastard got exactly what was coming to him. In those tender moments, a profound sense of renewal bloomed within me. The shackles of Derek's malfeasance no longer weighed me down. My tale of tragic betrayal had transmuted into one of triumphant rebirth, forged from the bonds of steadfast loyalty. I would never be a victim again. My friend's belief in me ignited a newfound inner fire, one that would blaze brightly, consuming any deceit that dared encroach upon the peace I had reclaimed. This was only the beginning. After the tsunami of humiliation Derek endured in the wake of his ouster from Cypher Shield, it felt cruelly fitting to deliver one final, crippling volley. A grand spectacle to raise any remaining remnants of his ruined reputation to the ground. Fate seemed to align when our city's annual Tech Hub conference rolled around a few weeks later. It was the perfect high-profile stage to showcase the true depths of his deceptions once and for all. Vince spearheaded the efforts, leveraging connections to ensure both Derek and his mistress Cassidy snapped up coveted invites. Salacious rumors had swirled in tech circles for weeks, so their presence ignited feverish anticipation. They took the bait, either oblivious to the firestorm brewing or too arrogantly defiant to heed the warning signs. On the night of the gala, I arrived through a discreet back entrance, carefully plotting my final ruinous gambit. Donning an elegant black gown, my appearance would be the calm before the storm. I took a fortifying breath as Vince and Sophia rendezvoused with me, sleek in their evening attire. 
It's go time. You both remember the plan? They nodded in grim acknowledgement, the gravity of this evening's events clear. This was about more than mere payback against Derek. It was about justice. Irrefutable and blinding for all to bear witness. Knock him dead, kiddo! Vince murmured with a reassuring squeeze of my arm. I slipped into the opulent grand ballroom, a hush falling over the crowd as I became visible. Derek stood near the stage, engaged in what appeared to be a heated discussion with a petulant Cassidy. Even through his rumpled tuxedo, the weight of recent weeks had clearly exacted its toll. Striding to the center of the room, I felt hundreds of probing gazes scrutinizing my movements. Let them feast their eyes and minds for the reckoning to come. Tapping the microphone twice, I cleared my throat, the sound piercing through the tension like a thunderclap. Excuse me, everyone, may I have your attention, please? My voice rang with commanding authority, instantly silencing any lingering whispers. My name is Amelia Archer. Many of you are likely familiar with the sordid allegations surrounding my husband, the disgraced Derek Archer, and his criminal fraud along with infidelity involving the woman beside him, Cassidy Wells. An audible murmuring rippled through the ballroom as I gestured to the pair, paralyzed like deer in headlights under the ever-intensifying spotlight. Well, those rumors are all true, and then some, I pronounced with finality, holding up a tablet displaying the reams of incriminating documentation. This degenerate knowingly embezzled millions from Cypher Shield, a firm founded on the labor and investments of this entire community, for his own crooked interests. The tension hung thick as onlookers absorbed the extent of my words. But perhaps even more repulsively, he financed a protracted, despicable affair with his colleague Cassidy by diverting those misappropriated funds to luxury hotel gifts and other salacious trysts. Jaws a pape. The crowd drank in every damning detail. I fixed Derek with a searing glare as he feebly tried to protest, his mouth opening and closing in futile dismay. So let this sordid saga serve as a righteous reckoning against the moral failings of greed, infidelity, and exploitation, I proclaimed with conviction. This towering monument to decadence must implode under the weight of its own iniquities. As if on cue, Sophia initiated the video sequence assembled from the annexed files. Lurid photo evidence, salacious email exchanges and incriminating financial statements flashing across the giant ballroom screens for all to absorb in unvarnished detail. A guttural cry of mortification rang out as Cassidy collapsed to her knees, clawing and grasping at whatever dignity she could salvage. Derek stood stupefied, transfixed by the carnage of his sickening misdeeds materializing before him. You're... you're unhinged, he managed to sputter incredulously, veins protruding in his flushed face. Still spinning lies to shield your inflated ego from accepting the truth? I coolly retorted, stepping forward to meet my wretched adversary eye to eye. That pathological tendency was your ultimate downfall. Derek faltered under my unrelenting gaze, shaking his head in vain denial. Face it, Derek, you are a shattered, morally bankrupt disgrace of a human being, a vermin who exploited the trust and resources of everyone around you to satisfy your grotesque vices. You don't deserve a shred of redemption or dignity. He opened his mouth once more, a final merciful protestation no doubt waiting on his lips. But I'd allowed his poison more oxygen than it deserved already. Your debt to society has finally come due, I stated with finality. This is justice. Ugly, furious, yet utterly warranted justice. May its searing conviction blacken your name into irreversible infamy. With that, I turned on my heel and marched away leaving Derek to wallow in the smoldering ruins of the life he had so ruthlessly disgraced through deception and indulgence, karma's reckoning complete. In the aftermath of my explosive unveiling at the Tech Hub Gala, Derek's life detonated in spectacular fashion. No sphere was left unscathed as the towering inferno of his sins raged. Within days, CypherShield's remaining investors launched a blistering lawsuit, citing racketeering, fraud, and embezzlement charges that could bankrupt Derek for decades. Corporate sponsors began falling like dominoes. Termination letters flooded in as news of his depraved conduct with Cassidy circulated. Any upstanding firm couldn't risk the stain of association. Several media outlets salivating over the salacious scandal unearthed further incriminating details. 
Testimonies from relatives and former employees painted a disturbing portrait of clinical narcissism and serial infidelities that called Derek's entire professional career into question. For my part, I opted out of the media circus, letting the uncontestable evidence dismantle his legacy of deceit. I spent evenings with Vince and Sophia, sharing bottles of bold Cabernet in solemn celebration of justice served. I still can't believe we pulled that off at the gala. Vince grinned one night, clinking his wine glass against mine. Did you see Derek's face when the videos started rolling? He looked like he'd been gut-punched by a freight train. And that sniveling shrew Cassidy, Sophia chimed in with a derisive scoff, served her right for betraying her entire gender to cozy up to that creep's ill-gotten riches. We shared a cathartic laugh at their expense. After the maelstrom of deception and pain, seeing the catalysts of betrayal suffer their just desserts was perversely uplifting. I had confronted the harsh realities of evil, emerged vindicated. However, the sweet, lingering reverberations of victory curdled one fateful evening a few weeks later. A familiar name flashed across my phone screen, Derek. I froze, my chest tightening with disbelieving dread. Part of me thought he'd slink permanently into exile after the humiliation. But of course, malignant denial seemed to course through his veins. I let the call go to voicemail as his desperate ramblings crackled from the speaker. Something about not being able to access accounts or funds, needing one last conversation to explain his side. I shook my head grimly, the audacity of his pleas stoking anger through my veins. How pathetically typical of him to beg for scraps after such scorched-earth destruction. When another insistent call came through, I answered with fury blazing. What could you possibly want after everything you've put me through? Your staggering greed and depravity were enough to incinerate your entire life to ashes. I'm utterly ruined. Derek's voice trembled, a husk of his once arrogantly boastful tenor. The lawsuits, the investigations, I, I can't escape any of it. And whose moral bankruptcy dealt that fatal wound, I countered acidly, reveling in dismantling the remnants of his fragile ego. Did you think there would be no dire consequences for betraying me in such a horrific, protracted manner, for pillaging everyone around you to indulge your deviant appetites? I'm penniless, Amelia, Derek continued, a hollow plea creeping into his voice. I have nowhere to turn. Just give me a chance to explain. Please. Save your sniveling excuses, I seethed with finality. Any man possessing even an iota of a soul would not relentlessly trample on the sanctity of marriage and those he claimed to cherish. There was a pregnant pause as Derek registered the futility of redemption. You've made your wretched bed, I pronounced with conviction. Now lie in it and ruminate on the consequences of your corrosive greed and ego until your dying day. With that, I terminated the call, severing any lingering embers of remorse for my husband's self-immolated downfall. He was now an ashen husk in my mind, effectively excised from existence. It was over. Justice had been rendered in all its blistering glory. In the serene two years following my campaign of scorched-earth defiance against Derek, I found unexpected solace in rebirth. Gone are the shackles of betrayal and emotional tumult, forsaken along with our sham marital vows the instant his trail of deceit unraveled. In their place now shines a renewed inner radiance, forged from the bonds of friendship that guided me through my bleakest suffering. When the smoke finally cleared and Derek's raging inferno of misdeeds smoldered to cinders, I turned inward. With Vince and Sophia's counsel, I devoted myself to intensive therapy, healing the deep scars inflicted by my depraved husband's utter lack of morality or remorse. For a time, deflecting bitter thoughts about the devastation he wrought proved agonizing. When waves of anger and trauma roiled, I medicated, seeking stillness through exercise, meditation, immersing myself in nature's soothing expanses. Slowly but surely, I rediscovered the fire of my own indomitable spirit that shattered Derek's web of lies. Days faded into months, then years. I savored each incremental reawakening of my confidence, passion, and purpose, unshackled from his lurid exploits and treachery. My stalwart career as a software engineer remained a bedrock through it all. I excelled on ambitious projects, mentored bright junior engineers, and fiercely protected my team's talent from toxic cultures of dishonest leaders. In turn, terraces shower me with new opportunities, 
raises, leadership roles, finally culminating in a director position managing cutting-edge cryptography initiatives. I redoubled my pursuits of creative stimulation as well. I relished adventures with Vince and Sophia, exotic vacations, theatrical shows, and other indulgences that awakened a renewed lust for experiencing the richness of life. On one such trip, hiking through the lush rainforests of Costa Rica, I found myself marveling at our resilient friendship. When embers of doubt crept into my psyche in those first turbulent months post-Derek, their belief in my brighter destiny never wavered. You know, it was your unwavering moral compass that ultimately saved all of us from falling prey to that snake, Vince reflected wistfully as we traversed the verdant jungle paths. If you hadn't been willing to go scorched earth, who knows how much more damage he could have inflicted. I contemplated those words, embracing their profound resonance. By exposing Derek's lecherous criminality, I hadn't merely claimed vengeance. I had redirected my life path away from that corrosive spiral of deception. That chapter of suffering while anguishing had transmuted into catalyzing events that forged me into a stronger, more self-assured woman. No longer would I meekly accept exploitation or cruelty at the hands of anyone, colleagues, or lovers. I embraced uncompromising defiance as a protective reflex, a shield hardened by the purifying fires I'd stared down and conquered. Now, each new dawn delivering novel challenges and adventures exhilarates me with fresh possibility. What heights can I scale if tempered by the lessons of betrayal's harsh tutelage? What bonds might I cultivate, untainted by doubts that strengthen my tenacity and uplift others from despair? These are the unanswered wonders beckoning me into the bright horizons shimmering ahead. A panorama free from the toxic specter of derailed dreams and despoiled trust that I once lamented under Derek. Now, only wispy embers of my former life still smolder, no longer possessing the vitality to sear me with anguish. They have dissipated to half-remembered phantoms, devoured by the radiant rising of my triumphant, remade identity. My name is Amelia. I am a survivor, rededicated to abundance and grace, and my journey soars ever onward without limitation.